Our final here in the first game of the quarterfinal round saw East St. Louis Lincoln taking out Elgin. The Maroons finish at 22 and 9 on the campaign. The final 64 to 54 at the half. Lincoln led it 34 to 28. They made a run in the third quarter. Elgin closed it, but in the fourth quarter, East St. Louis Lincoln spread it out with the lead, got a couple of key buckets there, and also scored from the free throw line to move on to another quarterfinal appearance for Coach Benny Lewis and the Tigers of East St. Louis Lincoln. Coming up next, of course, Chicago King, undefeated Chicago King. The last game they lost was to East St. Louis Lincoln last year at the Assembly Hall in the semifinal round. To quote Sonny Cox, we blew that game. So they are back to vindicate themselves, and this time Sonny Cox wants to win the entire thing. He's been quoted as saying before the Chicago Public League Championship is just about as good or maybe even better than the state championship, but that tune has changed because he and his Jaguars won the state championship and, of course, West Aurora. Ready to try to pull the upset West Aurora. It'll be interesting to see if, in fact, they will slow it down or run with it. Right now, let's listen to our band performing here at Assembly Hall. The Rock Island Rocks with band director Edgar Butterfield. Talking with Frank Lee, the coach of the Sterling Golden Warriors, whose ball club lost in a battle in the super sectional with Elgin. Frank, I guess first your reaction to the ball game we've just seen. Well, we were glad that Elgin could stay with East St. Louis Lincoln. We thought that you know we'd have an opportunity, and and uh, we played real well against Elgin. We just didn't come up with the plays at the end of the game to win it. But uh, you know, you always feel hurt when you have to come down here and you're this close. And and yeah. uh, we just <laughs> had a great year, and and uh, we're happy for. It. We don't have any regrets, but we wish we could have been here. Frank and I go back a long time. I remember when this young guy was coaching at Winnebago High School very successfully. You came out uh, a little bit of a surprise this year. Rock Island was the power, the rated team in the uh, Rockford Super Sectional area. Well, Rock Island, we in fact, they blew our bubble early in the year. We won nine in a row, and we played Rock Island. They, they blew us <laughs> out of the water at the Rockford Classic. And I think our kids regrouped, and we were fortunate. Uh, Galesburg beat them. Galesburg played a great game to beat them. Then we were able to come back and get Galesburg. So it was a, you know, it's been a great year for us, a great run. and. And, uh, you know, it was a surprise. We're just happy to have gone as far as we could. Frank, tell us about Kelly Preston. He was a kid. Every time I saw a box score, he's 35, 40 points. We're going to miss <laughs> Kelly. Kelly was a tremendous <laughs> player for I us. I would imagine you miss him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was just a great player. He did it all for us. And the thing that he did is he made everybody else on the floor better. You know, he uh, led our team in assists, led them in rebounds, led them in uh, steals, and, and ended up with a 24-point score for two years in a row. And, you know, what a great player. What a great kid. Well, I'll tell you, Frank, you had a great year, and I know you've been building that Sterling program. How much of that is back next year? Well, we have two bad. We had two back this year, and we'll have two players who played a lot for us back last year. But I think the thing is that, you know, we told our kids this year that they were playing against one of the better teams in the Northern Illinois last year in practice, and our kids practiced hard and made them better for this year, and hopefully it'll make the next year's group better for this. Frank, thank you so much for the visit. Great year. Good luck to you. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Frank Lee, the coach of the Sterling Golden Warriors, our first guest out here this afternoon between games. And now we have Dr. Gary Goforth with us, who was one of the uh, physicians honored last night here at the uh, little affair they have, a little press gathering uh, prior to the state tournament. Dr. Goforth, you had to be very happy to be among uh, the physicians honored. Yes, that's quite an honor. I was really pleased. 
sports medicine. Boy, it's an all-encompassing term anymore. You don't have to be an athlete to be interested in sports medicine, do you? That's true. There are a lot of areas that are involved, and the uh, primary objective is just try to keep the kids playing. Now, I might detect just a smidgen of a little Southern Illinois draw. Now, you're uh, based in Nashville. You work with Nashville, Hankneyville, and Oakville, three programs. That's true. Uh, I've been in Nashville for 15 years, and... Uh, well, I went to school in Alabama for a couple of years, <laughs> but I've been in Southern Illinois most of my life. Gary, what, is there a more common sports injury than others? Well, the ankle seems to be the most uh, easily irritated because it's stuck way out there on yeah. the end of the leg, and it's such a vital area that it lays up a lot of kids. And when uh, it, it, it's really a slow thing to heal, and it's, it's aggravating. This is certainly a field that we and I could talk a long, long time on this subject, but sports medicine has become a tremendous uh, field in itself anymore, isn't it? Yes, it has. There are uh, specialty organizations now being developed, and I'm basically in family practice, and that means we do everything, but uh, <laughs> this has just always been an interest to me, so I've, I've stuck with it for this long, and uh, I've got a couple of boys coming along in high school now, and then I've got another one that's four years old, so <laughs> I'll probably be at it for a while. Gary, congratulations again for the honor last night. Thanks for the visit. Thank you very much. Dr. Gary Loco, go for it. We'll get it right in a minute. Go for it, our guest from uh, Nashville. And let's take a break now. Now this from one of your network sponsors. This 1990 chapter of March Madness is sponsored by The Country Companies. When it matters most, the country's behind you. The Illinois Pork Producers, the 10,000 pork producers of Illinois, encourage you to try the new lean, nutritious pork, the other white meat. And True Value Hardware, for quality, selection, and personal attention, make True Value Hardware your store of first choice. a reminder that kids who participate in high school sports tend to go a little farther than those who don't. We are back at the assembly hall. Game one is history and now Chicago King will take on West Aurora and joining us before the ball game. King coach Sonny Landon Cox and Coach Cox, you're the team to beat. You agree? Well, I don't know about that. We're just down here to try to do the best as we can. There, are, there were eight great teams down here. You know, so everybody seems to be good. Talk a little bit about your team. It starts, I know, with Jamie Brandon. I know he's just having an outstanding year over the 3,000 point level already in his career. Uh, is he one of those unstoppable? Well, Jamie Brandon is a great player. But I think we have two seniors that have started for me for four years, and they have never won it. They've been down, this is their third trip down state, and they did like to win it this year. You have a young freshman named Richard Griffith who has definitely had an impact on your team. Talk about him. Well, Richard is on our team. He's starting, uh, and he's coming along very, very uh, well, and he's coming along very, very fast, much faster than I thought he would. Sonny, tell me, how much did the loss last year? in the semifinals have to do with this season. Did that put you back on a mission? I know you were really upset when that game was over because King didn't play King basketball. It still hurts. You know, I, I think that we had the best team last year, and I think we blew it. And we don't intend to do it this time. What has been your message to your team, or are they the kind of team that knows what they have to do? Well, I let them know that on any given day, any team can beat them. But they've got to play every play, every game hard. Now, you can run up and down the floor. West Aurora has been known to put it down on the floor, too. Do you think they'll run with you? Do you think they'll give that a go? I know absolutely nothing about West Aurora. All right, Coach. Well, good luck to you. We'll see you after the ball game. That is Coach Sonny Cox of Chicago King. He's taking on West Aurora. And Coach Gordon Kirkman is with me. First of all, Coach, before we talk about Chicago King, let's talk about what it took to get down here. Congratulations for making the Elite Eight, first of all. I know ever since you hit town, everybody's been saying, yeah, but how are you going to beat King? That's a good question. <laughs> well, we started out, I thought we had a, a real tough regional. We had to play Batavia in our first ball game, and they were 23-1, and one, a real fine basketball team. And we probably played uh, maybe the best game we played all year against Batavia. 
and uh, then played our crosstown rivals east aurora and that was a real barn burner that maybe was one of the best games uh, that uh, we've been involved in all year I went to the east aurora sectional and met uh, glenbard north and then glenbard east in the finals and played conant in the super sectional a lot of people are maybe a little bit surprised that you're here after your start. I know you didn't have uh, that great of a season early, but uh, you've really been playing basketball. Mario Clark and Billy Taylor have been a key. Well, they have. Both of them are outstanding basketball players. I, you know, I don't want to apologize for the first three losses, but we played some mighty good basketball teams yeah. uh, in Chicago Vocational, uh, Peoria Manual, and Thorn Ridge. All three of them, I think, were rated at some time or another throughout the, the year. But uh, our kids, uh, I think, learned a lot in playing that kind of competition. We knew that our competition would not be that tough all year long, and uh, we had an injury. Billy Taylor was out for about a month with a broken arm in the middle of the year. I think that possibly helped us a little bit. Gave some other people uh, an opportunity to play, and also uh, I think the kids realized that they could play uh, with a lot of ball clubs without some of our real good ball players in there. You've reeled off 17 in a row. Final question, to make it 18 in a row against a talented, talented team like King, what kind of tempo are you gonna play? Because you can push it up or is that suicide? Uh, well, we'll push it up at times. Uh, I, we're gonna have to wait and see uh, just exactly how the, the ball game goes, but we'll play at a little slower tempo than what we normally play, but try to pick our spots uh, when we run and when we hold it up. Coach, best of luck to you. Okay, thank you, Jim. It is West Aurora, Chicago King coming up in just a moment, but first, let us pause for these messages. Dropped a one-pointer to this uh, Aurora West ball club in the super sectional at Chick Evans Field House in DeKalb on Tuesday night. Tom, you made a comment to me. It's great at least to be standing on this floor. <laughs> it's nice one of us could stand down here anyway. I'm sure all the kids are watching right now, and uh, I'll tell them how neat it was to actually get down here. You know, we were just uh, also commenting, West Aurora physically looks a lot smaller than Chicago King warming up, and you said that West Aurora looked pretty big Tuesday night. They look big on Tuesday, but I have to admit now they look relatively small once I'm standing down here. Tell us something about your ball club. You had a great year. I know you said you had two 6'6 inside players. Right. We had two big guys in the middle, Mike Selinski and uh, Matt Maris, who did a great job of rebounding against West. We were really concerned about getting on the defensive boards, and they did a great job and uh, got us to within one point, actually two points of being down here. Got a couple, a couple of relatively young guards, huh? Right. Uh, Brett Sharkey was our sophomore point guard, and uh, uh, Boris Patterson is one of our other uh, players that will be coming back. And then we had a crew of seniors. We'll be losing about 10 seniors this year, so it'll be tough to replace those guys. We do have a couple young guys coming back, right? What, how do you look at this ball game, Tom? Uh, what do the Blackhawks have to do? They're playing the team ranked number one in the nation. Right. Well, I, you know, I, I, honestly, all I know about King is what I've read, except they're very big. I know West is extremely well coached, and uh, Gordy will come up with a great, great, a great game plan. They'll have to rebound well. I know that. They'll have to hit the board. Got a great player, Mario Clark, and, of course, Billy Taylor. A good one-two punch, but King seems to be uh, equally strong right down the line. Right. I think King plays a lot of zone, so they're probably going to have to hit from the outside, too, a little bit. What was the story of your game? Relatively low scoring uh, contest. Right. We've been an up, up and down the floor kind of team, a press and run type of team. We had to alter our game plan a little bit. Tried to break their press and slow it down, and uh, we turned it into a 40-point ball game. We're actually able to stay with them. Tom, and you, from a coaching standpoint, are there a lot of changes when you go into a big arena like this? Now, you went to a pretty good-sized field house in DeKalb. Right. Well, if you're a pressing team, you have 10 feet more of court yeah. to deal with. And I think that helped us break the press a little bit. Uh, you, you know, you have 10 more feet to escape. So uh, it makes it a little tougher for a pressing team on a big court like this. This may be one reason coaches are good ball club contenders really have to push conditioning because late in the season you're tired anyway. The legs maybe aren't as strong as they were early. you got to really go hard, don't you? Exactly, especially when you get down here. Tom, congratulations for a great year. Conan's had a big year all the way around, I know. Right. Football and, and, and yeah. uh, basketball and some of the other sports wrestling, it's been a great year. It's been exciting at the high school. Hey, thanks for the visit. Good luck yeah. to you in the future. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Tom McCormick, the head basketball coach of Hoffman Estates, Conan. Now back to the bench, and there's Frank Bassoni, right? Thank you very much, Art. In case you just joined us in the first game today in our quarterfinals, East St. Louis Lincoln continued their march through the tournament, trying for their unprecedented fourth tournament victory uh, championship in a row beating Elgin 64 to 54 and now we're moments away from West Aurora and King in the first game today coach uh, East St. Louis Lincoln got off about the same number of shots but they were a warmer shooting team and they seemed more comfortable on the floor and their experience showed yeah Frank they got a lot of transition baskets too a lot of uh, cripples as we say where uh, the 
Elgin Ball Club has lived on the perimeter and they shoot the uh, three-pointer. And uh, again, uh, coming out in the man-to-man, -man, pushed them off that late in the ball game. But uh, East St. Louis uh, will watch with interest. I'm sure the kids will shower quickly and come out here to watch to see this awesome King Ball Club because uh, they were, what, 30-point uh, losers to them in mid-December? There's a profile of the Jaguars from King who are on a mission to prove they're the best basketball team in the state and the nation. Their enrollment's 1,201. Of course, they play in the Chicago Public League. They're the Red Central Division, and they're perfect. The Blackhawks of West Aurora, red and blue from the upstate eight with 2,286. And uh, last year, they lost to East Aurora. And this year, they come down, eliminating Conan in the super sectional. And they're 24 and 5, as you can see. And the game plan is the key. You're Gordy Kirkman. How do you play against this juggernaut of King? Well, I think, you have, first of all, you have to be patient. You don't want to get in a transition thing, uh, uh, game because, first of all, you want to take the rebounds out of the game. And, and by that, King's going to dominate a, in a rebounding situation. I think you've got to move the ball, be patient, have sh uh, good shot selection, and you're going to have to hit them, Frank. Let's take a look at how these two teams match up. Comparison-wise, field goal attempts. Look at this, 63% field goal shooting that's a lot of point blank shots and that, that's exactly right that's a lot of shots inside uh, in the lane off the glass and uh, that's why it's a 63 percent shooting ball club this team does not shoot from the outside uh, much uh, they shoot uh, three point goals only almost in the person of jamie brandon aurora is going to have to hit a high percentage and they're going to have to do a job to try to stay close on the boards against this much bigger king team exactly that's where the, that's where the battle is going to be for them West Aurora, when they answer the phone, they say West is best and we're undefeated in 1990. Well, so is King. They haven't lost since last year here to Lincoln, 16 to 57. And that game has uh, been one in which Sonny Cox got videotapes of and has run virtually every week all season long reminding King that they didn't win last year. Well, and I think King wants to get off that uh, bubble there, too, because uh, Sonny Cox said a year ago the Chicago Public League Championship is the big championship, but I think that those young men that are on the floor warming up right now, they want to capture a state title, after all, and show the uh, entire United States that uh, they are the best prep basketball team in the nation. As Gordy Kirkman looks on, King tasted Westinghouse in the Public League final 83-48, to and that was one fine Westinghouse team. Well, now we're set for the second quarterfinal day. Here's our press announcer, Steve Adams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the coaches and players for today's second quarterfinal round game featuring the Jaguars of Chicago King and the Blackhawks of West Aurora. First, let's meet King High School of Chicago entering this game with a record of 29 and 0. Here is the head coach in his ninth season, Landon Cox. Assistant coach, Benny Parrott. And now the players. Number 11 of 510 freshman, Michael Irvin. Number 12 of 510 senior, Mark Winter. Number 15, a 5'10 sophomore, Anthony King. Number 21, a 6'6 freshman, Kaim Cunningham. Number 22, a 6'3 freshman, Gerard Billingsley. Number 24, a 6'6 senior, Anton Little. Number 25, a 6'3 junior, Noah Miller. Number 30, a 6'9 freshman, Thomas Hamilton. Number 31, a 6'10 senior, Damian Porter. And number 32, a 6'6 junior, Sylvester Ware. And now, let's meet the starting lineup for the Jaguars of King High School. At one forward, a 6'7'' senior, number 20, Johnny Selby. At the other forward, a 6'4'' senior, number 23, Jamie Brandon. 
At center, a 6'11 freshman, number 54, Richard Griffith. At one of the guards, a 6'3 senior, number 13, Ahmed Sharif. And at the other guard, a 5'10 senior, number 10, Fred Schofield. Those are the Jaguars of Chicago Kings. And now, introducing the Blackhawks of West Aurora High School, entering this game with a record of 24 wins and five losses. Here is the head coach in his 14th season at the school, Gordon Kirkman. Assistant coaches, Kurt Shaw, Rick Thompson, and Rick Albright. And now let's meet the players. First, number 10, a 5'8 sophomore, Rodney Brooks. Number 12, a 5'7 junior, Tim Madden. Number 20, a 5'11 senior, Kahari Cross. Number 24, a 5'10 senior, Zen Postlewaite. Number 32, a 6'3 junior, Brock Morrison. Number 34, a 5'10 junior, Derek Woods. Number 40, a 6'1 senior, Dante Bronau. Number 42, a 6'0 junior, Richard Lyon. Number 50, a 6'2 junior, Jason King. And number 52, a 6'5 junior, Thor Shavers. And now, here is the starting lineup for West Aurora. At one forward, a 6'3 senior, number 30, Morris Gray. The other forward is a 6'6 junior, number 44, Billy Taylor. At center, a 6'5 junior, number 54, Michael Odunua. At one guard, a 5'10 junior, number 14, Michael Simmons. At the other guard, a 6'2 senior, number 22, Mario Clark. Those are the Blackhawks of West Huron. Now, introducing the officials for today's second quarterfinal game, Mike Devening of East Alton and Scott Jones of Centralia. We'll continue from Assembly Hall. Sports Channel's coverage of the IHSA, Class A, and AA State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by the Chicago Tribune. Get big league coverage of your community in the new Preps Plus section. High school sports and more every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the Chicago Tribune. And by the Jerry Gleason All-American Automotive Group. You're never more than minutes away from the best car deal in town with Gleason. from Payne County, West Aurora, and the Upstate 8. Go against Chicago King from Cook County in the Chicago Public League. The Blackhawks will wear white, trimmed in blue and red. King will wear black, trimmed in gold. Looks like a David and Goliath matchup when you just look at the sizes out there, Frank. Uh, King is actually often uh, some of the people they can bring on the floor. And of course, all eyes are going to be on Mario Clark and Jamie Brandon, two uh, consensus all state. Landon Cox says he can even bring in his Buffalo lineup by bringing Damian Porter in at 6'10 and 270 and putting Jamie Brandon back to guard, putting Sharif on the point. So if he does that, it's 6'10, 6'11, 6'7 on the baseline. We're set for basketball in our second quarter final. Here we go, and King starts with the ball, and they start their mission to try to win in 1990. Brandon is 23, and he'll play all over the court. They'd run him off screens. It's a zone for West Aurora. 
And what's the is going to have to concentrate on the inside, keeping the ball out, out of the uh, out of the lane area. Schofield's first shot is not good. A rebound on the board offensively for a deuce for Ahmad Sharif. And that's going to be a big story in this ball game, Frank, is the offensive board uh, of Kings. Uh, what's the has got to got to hold their own there. Typical zone for King. It's a 2-3 two, three. Three zone. Griffith is 6'11 and 240, and he's the freshman center. He's, he's a colossus in the middle. Jump shot, Oduboy. Good confidence builder for the young man going over the 6'11 uh, post player. A 1 2 2 zone uh, applied by uh, West Aurora. The Blackhawks will want King to use some time on the clock before getting their shot off, and they'll be patient, too. Brandon, the stop and pop of the baseline is fouled. West Aurora's mixing up just a little bit. They show the 1-2-2 front when the ball went to the baseline. They kind of shifted into more of a 1-3-1 zone defense, so uh, a little shifting, a little matching up there. That was Mario Clark showing his tournament hairdo. Some nice styles out there. It's different. Had a big story in the press the other day about him. The here's the famous Jamie Brandon. He finished second in Mr. Basketball voting a year ago to Dion Thomas. He averages 26 points a game and eight rebounds. We saw him earlier in the year in the shootout in uh, the Springfield Civic Center, and he was uh, all that the uh, press say say he can do. He can do it, uh, Frank. Outstanding basketball player. We're just underway with King in the black, leading by one over Aurora West with the ball. Mario Clark, 22, is the big scorer. He's there on the right wing. Steps in and immediately double teamed by the huge King baseline. Selvi, 20, and Brandon, 23, have started for four years. Clark, a three. Good patience on the part of West Aurora. They tried the right side with Clark. He got trapped. He kicked it out. They reversed it back to him, and he hit the three. Showing the one, two, two to start with, Frank. Schofield lobs to Griffith. He's turn around his home. Rashard Griffith played early, a little unsteady as a 14-year-old freshman to start the season, but he's come on in a big way. Well, he's still growing. Here's the shot outside by Simmons. Gray went for the rebound, and Schofield has it. He replaced Keith Johnson on the point when Johnson was ruled ineligible to continue. The Blackhawks stay zone. That's Brandon. And they try to do that a lot, Frank. They try to isolate Jamie on the baseline where he can operate with the ball. He did so nicely there. He's one of the top high school stars in the United States. And his numbers prove it. Gray goes inside. Brandon saw it. Three on two. King. This is Jamie Brandon. Under control. Knew all along what he was going to do. And that was to take it to the cup with authority. They are a very explosive team, of course. Chris McKinney says of East St. Louis Lincoln, we like to play bump and run. King likes to play bump and kill you. Yeah. Five minutes, first quarter. Frank Bassoni and Coach Mel Rustio with Jim Albrecht. A three is too long. By Aurora West. Selby gets his first rebound. Chicago King wants to get the ball into Jamie Brandon's hands as much as they can on the baseline. They'll go down there and work the baseline. Cut the middle of the floor. Schofield plays the point. They go inside. Selby steps in for a slam. That was a statement there. Caught the ball, dropped steps, and slammed it home. Only the physical can do that, folks. It's 11 to 5, King, just like that. Simmons got fouled. Michael Simmons is 14. He plays the point. He got in the lane. In the first uh, three and a half minutes, I'm impressed. For good reason. Coach King says this could be the greatest high school team ever. And they've got to win three games to prove that. This is Gray. Too long. Brandon rebound. The Jaguars on the prowl. Lose it. Lucky break there for King. Sharif pops. Nice rebound, Brandon. Jamie again. This is King's third try. This is Selby for their fourth. That's where the domination of the superior athletic team is just going to take over this game, and it begins at the offensive end of the floor of West Aurora. You're going to have to be more patient down at that end. Count them here, Frank. The number of uh, attempts that Chicago 
King gets. Here's a little break here when they get the ball there, and then there's a shot. One. There's Brandon, and that was two of four. This is Selby. I really believe that the, uh, the you know the approach of West Aurora has to be a little bit more patient on their offensive end because they'll spend a lot of time down here trying to defend, which might not be uh, uh, the wise move. You won't see many players who have field goal percentages higher than free throw percentages, but Johnny Selby is one. 355 opening quarter, King by seven. And Aurora with the ball. West High School. This is a team that's come against some tough odds. They've had a great schedule this year. They've lost to some real powerhouses. Peoria, Manuel, Aurora East, Chicago Vocational, Thornridge, Bloomington, right. Mario Park. West is showing a little bit more patience. And normally you'd like to penetrate the seam of a zone, but the great thing that King has going for them in that seam is a 6'11 center. And he's a legitimate 6'11 center, too. Billy Taylor got caught, I think, on a push-off on the weak side. And Billy Taylor's a great athlete, hasn't had the ball in his hands. And you talk about, you know, getting into that seam. You've seen coaches around him yell, attack, attack, attack. But when you have the seven-footer in there, it's an intimidating factor that you are hesitant to do so. Morris Gray out for West Aurora. 20, Kahari Cross, a 5'11 senior, is in. One two, two, uh, zone by uh, West Aurora, Frank. Sharif in the right corner there. He's a senior. They start four seniors and the freshman center, 54, Richard Griffith. Notice they're posting Jamie Brandon. There's a wild pass by Schofield, and that got Sonny Cox up. Last time down the floor, uh, they've been running Jamie on the baseline. This past time, they post him at the medium post. There's a timeout of the court at 2.58 with King in the lead. Now this from one of your network sponsors, Country Company. Making it to the final game uh, has taught me a lot about teamwork. Uh, I don't think we'd have been in that final game if we hadn't played together so well as a team. Playing in the IHSA tournament will stick with me the rest of my life. Keith Mashoff, guard for Nashville's 1978 Class A championship team and his fellow country company's agents salute the players in this week's tournament. I wish everyone would be able to experience it for themselves. coverage of your community. Two seniors have started four years. Jamie Brandon, 23, outside. Johnny Selby, 20, inside. Kaboom. Every coach teaches the drop step, but not every coach has that kind of strength once you come off the floor. What a physical specimen is Johnny Selby. Selby at 6'7". He's listed at 215. He might be heavier than that. You know, Frank, a dimension on this King Ball Club that's very unique and nice is that Jamie Brandon can be used in a, in a multitude of ways as a point guard, as an off guard, as a baseline guard, as a, as a post player. Field goal showing King with 63% of the early going and a shutout on the boards. King 6-zip. Billy Taylor, 44, goes to the box. You're not going to score many inside against King. You're going to have to do some perimeter shooting and find the creases in that zone. Clark is 22, and he's a very capable scorer. And probably when you find the crease, don't go too deeply. Simmons for three. Mike Simmons hit it outside, and that's the strategy the Blackhawks won. And that's what they're going to have to do. They're going to have to shoot well from the outside to, to hang in there and have an opportunity in this ball game. Landon Cox has always said over the years, we'll play slow, we'll play fast, whatever you want. Griffith almost shot that downhill. Brandon rebound, stepped in, missed. And finally, West Aurora has a rebound. Finally, West Aurora has a defensive rebound. Cross is 20. He's going to play on the wing right. This is Billy Taylor. A little left-handed pop that goes. 
The success of that was Taylor flashing from the backside of Griffith where he didn't see him coming. He caught quickly and delivered the shot and scored, and that may be a ticket also. There's your score. King by two. Clock goes to 140. First quarter. Brandon. Little tricky dribble. And they exchange the guard. Schofield. Look how deep the zone is. Packed in 14 feet. Selby steps in. Missed. Selby missed a three-footer. Better job on the board the last couple of times by packing it in. Look, a few more white jerseys there. Simmons. This is cross. Too long. Griffith never jumped, but he was higher than everybody. Brandon beat his man to the left. Flashed in. Griffith passed it. Brandon's a great one-on-one -on -one ball player, and of course Griffith was there with excellent timing and with his superior height. He's playing this game, and as he gets as he gets bigger and grows and matures, <laughs> he can play this game looking down. Brandon is coming to Illinois. Rebound. Odumawa twice. Clark went back. And I give West a lot of credit that time. They stayed right there. Stayed right there and battled the boards and, uh, and, and came up here with an opportunity to score with us. Here comes Morris Gray back in the game at 30. Clark, Taylor, and Odumawa really went to work on the glass. You know, the beauty of being a guard on a ball club like King's uh, ball team uh, with the likes of the Selby and a Porter on the bench and a Griffin out here, you can afford to do a lot of things, play the game rather relaxed because you know that your missed shot uh, very likely is going to be rebounded by a teammate. Straight-A student Billy Taylor knocks it down. It's a two-point game again. Taylor missed a month with a fracture to the left wrist, and that's his shooting wrist. 40 seconds, first quarter. King will try to get the final try. West would love a steal and try to get a tie in the first quarter. But they're going to pack it down uh, playing against the superior inside uh, size of a king. Uh, in the 1-2-2 zone defense, they're going to pack down. Look at Brandon. He's out at top this time. Selby and Griffith on either side of the low post. I think you can look for Jamie Brandon, uh, Brandon either to get a screen or to go one-on-one -on -one with uh, maybe about eight seconds or so left in the ball in the uh, first quarter here. Brandon took a glance at the bench. Brandon on his move. Here he comes. His jump shot is too long. Nice rebound. Aurora's going to have to hurry to get that shot off. There it is. And that's the end of one quarter in the Assembly Hall. Chicago King, 14. West Aurora, a dozen. Now this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. Chicago King, who wants to be the 14th unbeaten champ, has demolished a pretty impressive field in the public league on the way here. I guess the biggest statement was the easy win over Westinghouse, who many said was maybe as good as King. Speaking of good teams, West Aurora took so care of some two, two including that wonderful 88-85 game, game against uh, Rival Griffin. East. Their big game. Their big game. Last time we had an undefeated champion, Frank, long time ago, 1981, Quincy, Spinawa. One of the finest teams ever to play high school basketball in Illinois. Scored that Quincy team. Field goal percentage is there. King has four more shots and three more percentage points. A couple more baskets in the first quarter. All right. West Aurora starts with the ball as we go to the second quarter. The winner here will play East St. Louis Lincoln tomorrow in the first semifinal game. Clark. Check it. That's great. Morris Gray. Four of a one-two-two zone defense by King that time. And they were able to get inside of it a little bit easier. 1-2-2 two, two zone for West. And remember, they like to play faster tempo, too, but not against power like this. Schofield's outside 10. There's Brandon. Look for him to shoot and score. Jamie's got great body control. He just pulls up so nicely. has a really picturesque jump shot. He had 26 points in the super sectional win. Uh, actually, the public league playoffs. Their Sweet 16 game. Check the defense now, more of a matchup, 1-2-2, two, two. now up 1-3-1 one, one, with Porter staying up high, drops down to 1-2-2, two, two. matching up a little bit. Billy Taylor, a three, Clark went hard for it, but Schofield won it. Schofield's only 5'10", but he goes 175 or 80 to block. Brandon, and that's Sharif. Damian Porter's now playing the middle at 6'10 and 270, getting grip at the ref. Selby off the window. Selby is so physical, Frank, so strong inside when he catches. He's just, it's just so difficult to stop him down low. 
He had 15 rebounds to go with 17 points against Westinghouse. King by four and trapping. West beat it. Simmons gives it up. Clark. You know, you press for one of two reasons. You either want to, you either think that your opponent cannot handle the ball and turn it over, or you want to up-tempo the game. In this situation, King is looking to up-tempo a little bit. Landon Cox just yelled out red. Brandon, left wing, and boy, Porter sets a wicked post down the block. He's warring in there with Odumawa. King is patient. Six minutes, first half. Lob to Porter, lost the handle, and pushed, getting it back. Damian Porter got caught. Well, he was a little frustrated. He was posted up. He had uh, he had an opportunity to get the ball, and he was a little frustrated that the guard didn't get him quick or more quickly. And uh, when he came inside, he lost it and then shoved the defender. In frustration. He's a transfer from Hubbard. And now King extends the pressure. One three one. Pretty well taken care of the ball here. Two to one. Both ball clubs doing over. a good job taking care of the ball. Look at this. Billy Taylor comes in the back. He's 6'6", junior, and comes and helps. Clark goes inside. Odumawa fakes Porter and wheels it in. Youngster came strong into the lane using the right hand. Got up high and dropped it down. And again, you're going to have to take the ball in there a little bit to keep the uh, things outside open. Schofield strolls it up court. Brandon plays the deep corner. Nice jump shot, Brandon. He's got Beautiful ball. And Jamie looks to go one-on-one -on -one quite a bit. In that situation, he just pulled up and popped him. Nine for Brandon. Five for Selby. There's 14 of their 20. This is Clark. And this is a three missed. Porter hauls it down. King likes to go to the whip once in a while, too. Sharif. Sonny King. Cox calls Sharif the forgotten man. You know, King's big people, uh, they run the floor well, Frank. They get up and down. Both Porter and Selby that time were up quickly. Brandon turned loose to three, and Mario Clark going one-on-one -on -one against Schofield with a whole charge. Always the toughest call for an official to make in the game of basketball, the block charge. Maybe in that situation, a very unpopular one, but Mike Tevening was certain that he had it. You can be moving backwards. You can't be moving sideways. Did he get there? Don't believe so. Brandon with the ball. King by four. Four and a half to play. Another lot of contact up between the boxes now. There is, and, and uh, because of the uh, contact in there, uh, Porter for a moment forgot where he was, and that was the fact he was in the middle of the lane and got the three-second call. Landon Cox is a little peeved about that. He gets Rashard Griffith back up off the bench. Mario Clark averaging 21-6. is out here 22 with Mike Simmons. Simmons the point. You know, Simmons 14 had four steals in that one-point super sectional win. That's not going to show up a lot in the headlines. But that gets a lot done. Those are those little things. This is the patience I think they need to go. They need to back, back the tempo down just a little bit here. They average 70 points a game. They're accustomed to moving the ball up and down a lot faster. Morris Gray, 6-3 outside now. There's Billy Taylor. He's left-handed. He turns there, lost the ball out of his hands, and King has a break with Brandon. Selby lost it. Brandon just stepped over, picks it up, dishes it to Porter, who missed a funny Selby rebound. That's the thing that Jamie doesn't get credit for much. He's an excellent passer, Jim. Porter should have jammed the ball. That's what he wanted to do. Then he changed his mind in midair. King extends its lead to six. Clark goes by two men on the right, puts it up, and in and count it. The best is here by 23, Mario Clark. Clark knew that he had the lane, and he took it to him right now, got the ball to fall, and now he's going for the old-fashioned three. He's Check it out here. He saw the opening as he's driving, and he just takes it up with great authority, great strength. Got it to fall, fall to the line and convert here. If West is in this game at halftime, it's going to do them a world of good because they're going to go in the tunnel and they're going to say, okay, well, that's King, but we're only down by two or three. That's exactly right, Jim. It's uh, the confidence factor you're looking for. And that's, what, that's what Coach is looking for right now. Three-point play, Mario Clark, and you notice Richard Griffith checked back in for King. Porter went out. Schofield. 1-2-2 uh, zone defense. 
West Aurora's going with it all the way. Brandon comes all the way down, uses the basket as a defense, and knocks it in, and has a chance for a three-pointer. He's strong. He's strong and is a good athlete. Throw the baseline with, uh, with a party here. Use the glass. Coming back. He's so effective down here, Frank. Strong, he ducks inside, comes back around, uses his vertical ability to lay it in. A lot of court awareness, a lot of experience. He missed that, he's got 11, but Selby's gonna rebound. He missed inside, Selby's got it back and makes it a four-point trip. That's just saying with it, when you're a horse like Selby, you can. Taylor fell down going for the rebound, that's, that's what freed it up. It's a seven-point game, as you see, under three minutes. West brings it to Billy Taylor, steps in, puts it up and in. Alaska Troop trips down the floor to Taylor that time. Clark before had the uh, lane to drive, took it, and you have to do that. And now a five-point game. King sometimes almost in still life on the offensive end. Yeah. If they know they can offensive rebound, Selby. That's the key, Frank, right there. They Brandon. String music. Brandon's uh, shooting well this first half. He's really uh, really in a, in a good rhythm, and he's uh, got a good stroke going. 13 points. Brandon, 13, and Selby with nine. Lead King. Very balanced scoring for West Aurora. Clark, their leading scorer, has six. This is great. Nice fake step. Got himself clear. Odumawa was out of his range, so Gray, Morris Gray, a little advised shot, stolen back by Simmons. He's knocked to the deck, goes the ball. Nice play by Billy Taylor, good hustle. Baseline, Odumawa. He got on the trampoline, and on the way down, he let her go. 28-23, King. Brandon says yes. Again, Brandon looks to operate on the baseline, coming in low. Placid looks on the faces. King uses Brandon's jump shot. And the rebound, Sharif. Ahmad Sharif. Sharif had a big tournament down here last year. Played very well. Another young man with a load of experience. He averages 11 a game. Now let's see if West will go for one. Clock moves toward a minute. They're down seven. Clark. Mario wants help. Simmons gives it to him. King's back in her 1-2-2. Two, two. Taylor turns, swatted away by Griffin. Taylor has it back. Short, Brandon rebounds. You have to hit almost every shot against King because you're, the defensive percentages are so big in their favor. Exactly right. King now will very likely wait for the last second shot. Well, Sonny Cox will want to go to red again or not. Half a minute. Well, that red was about a 25-foot J. Yeah, it almost got her down. Uh, Jamie Brandon. Griffith. Look at Griffith against, you know, Odumawa down there is 6'5". Yeah, he's had a little kid himself. Brandon's in control. He's coming. He'll get it back probably here with about six. Nope, it goes inside to Selby. Steps in for two. Selby nice runs it down. Nice west by Sharif. With one, and there's the shot at the buzzer to end the first half. The end the first As King runs to a nine-point advantage at halftime. We'll be back. Now this from one of your network sponsors, True Value Hardware. We're still visiting with Dave Fry, the Associate Executive Secretary of the Illinois High School Association. Dave, and prior to our little commercial break there, we were talking about something new this year, having high school students sing the anthem, which I've, I've really been impressed. Number one, the kids do a great job. No question about it. They are just absolutely, phenomenally yep. talented youngsters. And to find them as excited as they are about coming here to sing before this <laughs> audience, and certainly the TV audience, yeah, has been really rewarding. You know, you got... On the one hand, a very good situation. Big state, lots of high schools, lots of young people to choose from. Secondly, the tough thing is how do you choose them? That was the hard thing. And it's the main reason we didn't implement this kind of system a long time ago. So we worked a co-op arrangement with the Illinois Music Educators Association, okay. the teachers group, and they set up an audition system. And over 40 kids actually, after going through a qualifying system mm -hmm. first, went to the auditions and were screened out to come up with the eight kids that had come here to sing. 
I suppose over the years, Dave, you develop various criteria, your own selection people, as to what you're looking for. I know with the pep bands, they've had them down here long enough. You and I were talking in the office the other day. It takes a different type of musical organization to really perform well in this, in this setting. Well, artists perform to the character yep. of the occasion. And the pep band has to generate pep. That's yep. what it's all about. You can have a group that makes terrific music but may not get here yep. simply because they don't generate that crowd oomph behind them. Yep. And the kind of music we hear in the background is live and things up. Hey, so much uh, fun with this sermon. Now, you guys do a great job. Good to see you again. Thanks a lot, Art. Nice to talk to you. Dave Pry from the Illinois High School Association. Now time out for one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers. West Aurora may need a pocket full of miracles here against Chicago King because King is off to a 65% first half shooting percentage. Take a look at the numbers in the rebound. That, coach, that's the big story right there, Frank. King is simply dominating the boards and uh, rightly so because of their superior height. But uh, if West Aurora is going to be successful, they've got to be more patient on offense. Uh, they're going to have to take the ball inside once in a while to keep King honest inside. But, but uh, a slower tempo, they can't get uh, up tempo with King. Johnny Selby had a good first half for King, and so did Jamie Brandon, and they lead the scoring with 13 and 11. A couple of uh, other players, Rashard Griffith, the freshman with four, and Sharif with four. King led 14 to 12 at one quarter, and then West Aurora uses the balance with three players with six, Simmons with three. In the second quarter, then King won that quarter 18 to 11 to build their nine-point halftime advantage right now. The biggest highlights of the first half centered around King's all-everything All-American guard, 23, Jamie Brown. Jamie can do it all. He, he runs the floor so well. Here you get the, the follow-up slam by Griffith, the, uh, the young freshman, 6'11 freshman. Here's Brandon pulling up. He's really got a nice stroke going this afternoon. Excellent shooter, fine athlete. And on the other end, Billy Taylor with the left hand, taking the ball inside. Look at that look-away pass. Taylor and Clark are both fine ball players, and uh, in that first half, they took the ball to the basket when the opportunity presented itself. There's your halftime score, and it's a, uh, a mighty, mighty impressive King team that's uh, been put on. We'll come back to the Assembly Hall in just a moment. Now this from one of your network sponsors, it's Country Companies. Been some year for West Aurora. Their girls finished second in the state this year in the AA to Chicago Marshall. They've had some memories throughout the years of this tournament. In 1976, West was ahead of Morgan Park when Laird Smith fired at the gun, and Martin Morgan Park was the winner. But uh, West Aurora has had uh, their share of stars who remember Kenny Battle, who played there, and the famous Bill Small and Bob Carney over the years. Uh, and they brought a fine crowd along with them to enjoy the tournament. Great basketball community, uh, great tradition there, Frank, in the old city of Aurora. And King certainly has been uh, through to having great uh, tradition of late. Uh, they dominated things. In the last nine years, Landon Cox has lost 27 games at King. And for easy to figure out, they only lose three games a year. That's something special. We're set for the second half with King in the lead by nine. They start with the ball. They no, start the same five. No change with uh, Aurora's attitude on defense. And one two point try by Brandon that's not good. And King keeps it. This would be a coach's nightmare to defend an out-of-bounds play under oh. King's basket. <laughs> the lob would seem to be in, in uh, call for. They lobbed it between the rings. Here's one inside to Selby, and now Brandon goes baseline. He steps in, and he's missed two shots, but Selby's got this. Now Griffith, he just reached up and dropped it in. This is playing above the rim, folks, and West Aurora can do a little about that. He not only can score, he can block shots. One coach said you could find a beautiful girl on every street corner in America, but you can give me a shot-blocking center. <laughs> Gordy Kirkman urging on his troops, talking there to Michael Odumawa. King still wanting to put on a little bit of pressure at the half court. Now they fall back in their 1-2-2. Two, two. They'll try to match up and cover the middle a little bit. And, of course, they can do that with the likes of Selby and Griffin. West being as patient as they can be, but pretty soon they're going to have to take some shots and high percentage ones. They're going to have to take some threes, too. Oh, there's no question about that, but there's so much pressure on anything they do offensively. Clark tries that three. It's short, but Billy Taylor's there. 
Willie Taylor had to be in the right place at the right time to pick up an air ball and put it in. King has tried 43 threes this season. Brandon has tried 40 of them. Brandon working the baseline, cuts the middle quite a bit. King just holds the ball. They're, they've won five playoff games by an average of 35 points per game. I think absolutely no one can, can uh, second guess the way Coach Kirkman is playing this defensively, Frank. Selby tried to pass inside, slapped away. It's a partisan crowd, obviously, because uh, it's a David and Goliath story, and uh, folks are going to root for, uh, for David in this situation. And you're going to tell me the smart money's still on Goliath. I think the smart money's there. Yeah. Schofield outside, and King sets up their offense. They hide Brandon and try to pop him out of a pick. Selby. Johnny Selby is right. Selby is so, the arms. Arms. so strong. You know, the great thing about King, too, Frank, is that they can play at both speeds, too. They don't get all excited because nobody's throwing the ball up every 20 seconds. They'll pass it around with him. He's a lob inside the cell. He's so strong. Goes up, catches, makes a little contact there, and comes back up, gets fouled, and pushes now at the line. Selby was not a good free throw shooter early in his career. His numbers aren't great now at 54. He looks a lot more at ease up there. You know, you make a point, Jim, there. King scored a lot of run-out baskets against East St. Louis Lincoln uh, in the Salem shootout earlier this year, which I had the opportunity to cover for Sports Channel. And uh, it's it's just an amazing thing that they can play either way. The good ball club's game. 11-point King lead, 6-10, first or third quarter of play. Diamond won uh, full court uh, token press by King. Mario Clark just came up the floor, spotted the, they were sunk back and popped it home. Got a nice touch, Mario Clark. Came very uh, lethargic coming up the floor on offense this time. They're playing, uh, I think, just with a almost placid look on their face, like, okay, bring them on. They move the ball to the perimeter. Sharif tries. Sharif rebounds, steps in the paint, and got it down. And it counts, and he's fouled. Ahmad Sharif, 6'3", senior. You know, sometimes when you are so talented, uh, there can be a tendency. Let's see if we can pick up the foul. They, the they called Griffith, I think, for pushing off underneath. Well, yeah, right there. Here it is, right here. It's an 11-point king lead. The Blackhawks with the ball. They need a couple of threes in a row, or three or four hoops straight, get their momentum. Gray. Oh, intended for Taylor, but Selby picked it off. Frank, you mentioned by the 35-point uh, spread with which they've been beating opponents by, sometimes that's going to be a coach's nightmare because your team becomes a little bit complacent, plays just well enough to win. Good defense that time by the Blackhawks. They steal Brandon off the baseline. He had nowhere to go and walk. And the same official that made the questionable call about the block charge made a very good call there, and that was Mike Devney when he got the travel. You know, you can just get, you, when, you're, when you're beating people so handily, you can just get a little bit complacent and a little bit lethargic, and you kind of start getting into a feeling, well, we'll play well enough to win. Kahari Cross in for West Aurora, number 20. Simmons holds high. Simmons wants to go inside. Taylor and Adumawa try to get free. Simmons, a three. Rebound, King. Three on two. King, Brandon. Sharif, no. Ball on Kahari Cross. Brandon sees the floor very well. That's what's going to make him an excellent big-time college guard. Brandon was quoted in the press about Christmas time or so as saying something about coming to Illinois, but he did it. If they got on probation or couldn't play on television, he'd go to Oklahoma. Billy Tubbs later said he hadn't talked to him. <laughs> Maybe he should. <laughs> Maybe it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I don't know. Jamie Brandon probably can play almost anywhere. That's well, why it doesn't make any difference. If he decides he's coming to your school, he's going to play. <laughs> and that's the problem with this NCAA investigation, no matter where the university, Frank, if it takes so long, you're holding up a whole year of recruits one way or the other. Clark is free for a second. Sharif covered him. He got the ball to Simmons, who threw it up, and Adumawa rebounded it. Nice play. That's when you had the big trees come at you and uh, adjusted your shot. And, uh, of course, uh, Adumawa was there just to make the, the rebound bucket. Aurora West staying in their 1-2-2, sagging it back. 
4.15 in the third quarter. Frank Bassoni, Coach Mel Lucio, and Jim Albrecht from Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana. East St. Louis Lincoln has already won in the quarterfinals. Now King leads West Aurora in our second quarterfinal. We've got a couple of dandy matchups tonight, too. Brandon on a turnaround. Drops it home. There's the versatility of a Jamie Brandon. He caught with his back to the basket that time, turned around and popped it. Tonight, of, excuse me, Jim. One of those games where every basket Aurora West or rest of West Aurora makes looks hard. They're really earning every basket they get. King just comes down and buries it. First game tonight, Gordon Tech 28 and 1. Rolling Meadows with only two losses. Shot outside. Nicely done. Billy Taylor on the follow-up. Good looking athlete. Taylor is a good looking athlete. Follows the ball well to the basket. Uh, has done a nice job on the offensive board on a couple of occasions this afternoon. He's being recruited by Division I schools too, and his dad was a player at Northern and a good one. Rashard Griffith turned around. Selby forced the board. It won't count. You know, you get Griffith to use the glass a little bit more in his uh, next three years. He can be an awesome inside ball player. He needs to learn to use the soft kiss off the glass as he turns around and shoots. Morris Gray, 30, replaces Kahari Cross. Again, King throws in under their own goal. Schofield tries a three. Rebound, Brandon. Brandon swings around to the right. And he missed, and a foul on King. You know, the game tempo is slow, and you know, you can be lulled into something here if West Aurora could hit a couple shots in a row. Let's say a couple of threes. Couple threes. Couple threes. Couple of threes, Frank. You're right. They could actually get some momentum. They'd like to have this crowd back behind them. But the key that you said there, the key word is to hit a couple. You can't be expecting to get rebound baskets, which they've gotten the last couple times. Clark breaks free. Gray is flooded by Griffith. Griffith had six blocks in the Public League playoff game. Hello. Pretty good timing, but the uh, fact of the matter, he's a seven-foot youngster. Either that or he's got a tennis racket now. Mario Clark is outside with Simmons. And West Aurora re retains their patience. Under three minutes, third quarter. They're down 11. Oh, it's just such a big pass there. They're, they're, they're going to have to be patient regardless of getting down 11. Clark stepped in. Selby got his hand on the ball. And King has it. King has played but six players in this game. Porter played a few minutes in the first half in, re in uh, relief of Griffin. Sharif. Remember the experience that King has in those four seniors. They just absolutely use Jamie Brandon in every imaginable way. Sharif missed one wildly, but Griffith is right there, and he funnels it back in the basket. 44-31, King. You know you're great when your mistakes come out looking all right. They're great. 2.05 on the clock, and it's timeout on the court. King is in the lead, and we'll be back in a moment. Now let's pause for these messages. Here's the re always had an incredible record but not yet have they been unbeaten for a whole season well and that's the thing these young men are have a chance to shoot far into uh, to game and uh, of course you're gonna have, you're gonna see them uh, i'm sure in the, in the ball games tomorrow interesting matchup uh, between them and east st louis lincoln there are your leaders in scoring jamie brandon and mario clark or uh, taylor billy taylor and the rebound leader king by 13. selby with nine rebounds Leads the way, and Selby travels after he picks one off. And that's the big key, the 13 uh, board factor. That's a big, the, the big statistic in this ball game, Frank. And when King gets trapped, they throw over the top. They have a lot of advantages size-wise. And they can use the, the great versatility of Jamie Brandon. Outside, baseline, flash in the middle, posting up back to the basket. Well, when you have Taylor at 6'6 six, six, and Odumawa at 6'5 against normal high school teams, you use them a lot. Simmons got in, threw up a wild shot. Rebound is slapped out of bounds to West Aurora. But against King, the 6'6 six, six active inside player is almost nullified. Well, sure, he's because he's going against the 6'10, the 6'11. He's got to be able to come out like Billy Taylor did there, get the ball and drop it down. Taylor's a nice looking athlete. He's playing everybody's ball club that I've seen this year. He, he really shoots the ball well and he's quick. 
Well, he's not finished growing either. Dad's 6'7", he's 6'6", six, and six, 16. Oh, nice defensive play. Brandon took it to the hole. And it was tied up, and the arrow goes to Westerall. One of the nicest defensive plays you'll see. Let's look at it here. Looked like a good call. Great yeah. defensive play, but was it a jump ball? Yeah, I guess it was. He it did was. get the hand on there. The great defensive good play. Simmons plays wing left with Clark. Clark, a three-year starter. Gives it up to Gray, who dropped it out of bounds. That's that intimidation in there. You catch, you know, and you look to go up. And normally, in, in, in probably 95% of the high school ball games he's played in his life, he'd have shot right in that situation. Nice defensive play by Gray coming back, trying to take it back. He slapped it out of bounds, a 6'5 senior. When you're 6'3", and you flash the lane, and you catch, and you look, and there's a 6'11 kid staring at you, you uh, double clutch to do something else. All the players have decided to collect around mid-court. <laughs> and now, uh, that's red. <laughs> they go back. Griffith at the high post. And I mean high. Schofield plays the point, and King takes some time off. Run the clock down to 40. Selby, you play behind him, you pay. Very strong post player, very, very physical. And that's right, Frank. You play behind a young man like that, and you're, he's going to catch and go right over you. 13 point King lead. West may get the last shot of the quarter. Simmons is double teamed to Taylor. He's got a three on the way. Too long. Clark picked it off and got rid of it, but King's got it. Selby's ahead. Here he comes. Boom. And Selby. Easy does it, a little transition basket. Seven out of nine from the field as the quarter comes to a close. Four seconds now, and Selby has really played well in this quarterfinal game. He really has. He's, he's really gone on the boards extremely hard. He's, uh, he's done a nice job, especially on the offensive boards. Brandon, does he know how much time? In time. Brandon, no. At the end Brandon of three, Chicago, Chicago King in control over West Aurora. We'll be right back after this. You'll be looking at these teams tonight, Rolling Meadows with their star, Mike Lipnitsky, uh, All-Stater against Gordon Tech and their first team, All-Stater Tom Kleinschmidt. Then it's Quincy against Chicago Heights Bloom and Blue brings to the dance, Brandon Cole, who made the IC IBCA first team All-State with Jamie Brandon, Conzo Martin, Brandon Cole, Thomas Wyatt from Aurora East and Kleinschmidt. On the second team, Howard Nathan Manuel, Gary Langham of LaSalle Peru, Townsend Orr, Thornridge, Lipniski, Rolling Meadows, and Marty Clark. St. Joe. You'd coach either one of those teams in a minute. <laughs> King with the basketball in the lead by 15 in the first quarter final effort for the Chicago Powerhouse. Brandon has 15. Selby with 17, the leader. Now Brandon steps in right there and missed it. And Selby tried to rebound, and a two-shot foul. It was too easy. I too had it That's exactly himself. right. He shook the defense. They were gone. That's exactly right. He faked them out so much, and he was so wide open, he thought uh, he, he ought to coast in a little bit closer. I don't have an official oh, count, but I think King's only taken about three or four bad shots the whole game. They That's play under control. Yeah. So they've only had two close calls this basketball season. Quincy, two points. Tilden Tech, two points. Other than that, Lights out. Yep. Many folks might have thought they rode their bicycles to this gym well, too. Didn't the Lakers take him into the final minute? Of, uh, <laughs> they might be the underdog <laughs> again. Here's the next free throw by Selby. 50-33. Don't misunderstand us here. West Aurora has a fine high school basketball team. I mean, so did Westinghouse. Uh -huh. Scores don't always tell you much. King unusual team. It has a collection of talent and experience. Unbelievable. Mario Clark tries to spin one up there. Odumawa slaps it out of bounds. King remains in their 1-2-2 two, two zone defense. They really spread the wings out wide, put some pressure, and uh, occasionally West Aurora can flash somebody to the middle, but when they catch, they're looking at Selby or Griffin. Brandon got free. Rebound by Gray. When will West uh, start to run uh, they're they're going to probably open up here pretty quickly. They look like they're off the tempo and take some shots. You know, there comes a point in time in a ball game. You're 17 down. You're playing in the state championship game. Uh, hey, let's go out and play and have some fun now. Billy Taylor 
was on the one side. Clark got the ball on the other and has it slapped away. I would imagine Coach Kirkman has told him that already. You know, go out and take your shot, loosen up a little bit, let's go at him a little bit. They've got three juniors that start, Odumawa, Taylor, and Simmons. This will be a fine team again next year. Just a tough draw for them this year. Junior players all around the state is great. You'll see tonight uh, Gordon Tech as a great junior and a great junior class. Mario Clark, 74% foul shooter, nice touch. Clapped away from Griffith, and he picks it up. King by 16, Brandon, Selby, Deuce. Nice killing of the lane that passed the ball extremely well. Ball touched the floor, one touch the ball to by Brandon Selby. 94 feet, one bounce. Check it out here. You get the outlet to the middle of the floor, back to the right side, one time on the floor, and then back a little dump pass to Selby in the layup shot. And that's when all youngsters are really running the floor when you can do that. Goes out for West and for Hari Cross back in. 6.50 to play. King sits in their zone, and Simmons looks at it. Gray's on the left wing. Odumawa wants the ball inside. He had to come out to get it, though. Most of this game has been played on the outside by West Aurora, and understandably so with the physicalness and size inside. And that's the trouble that Lincoln had with them earlier in the air. Everything had to be outside, and Riley and Horton did not hit, did not shoot the ball well, and therefore it was a runaway for King. Well, Benny Lewis and the Tigers are going to get what they were wanting, and that's a rematch with, uh, with the Chicago Kings. And it'll be a semifinal that was the match of the same semifinal a year ago when King lost their last time, 60 to 57. Don't, don't think that Landon Cox won't remind them. Nice Brandon giving door back, give and go back door. Nice job. Now all of a sudden, you see what King does to you. They're 21 ahead. Mike Simmons. This is Billy Taylor. Now this is Kahari Cross. And King, relentless, brings it back at you. And you could be looking at a 30, 40 point difference here before it's over. Well, 540 is a lot of time. Brandon Cox said this year the city title is not the goal. It's the state championship. Brandon's on the baseline for an easy pair. And he's up to 17. West Aurora calls timeout. 5.32 to play in the final quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Now this from one of your network sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producer. Pork. Sports Channel's coverage of the IHSA, Class A, and Double A State High School Basketball Championships is brought to you in part by the Chicago Tribune. Get big league coverage of your community in the new Preps Plus section. High school sports and more every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in the Chicago Tribune. And by the Jerry Gleason All-American Automotive Group. You're never more than minutes away from the best car deal in town with Gleason. The machine called the Jaguars roll like this. Well, Sharif has the ball here, and he spots Griffin breaking up to the high post area. Griffin receives the pass, receives the pass, and you get Brandon breaking back door underneath behind the defense. Two times in a row, nice little play successful in those two attempts. Jamie Brandon, uh, coach, uh, came into this tournament the number three all-time career scorer with 3,052 points in the state of Illinois. Nice. Let's take a look by quarters here, and you'll see that uh, Kings ever so gently, seven-point advantage, then a six-point advantage, now an eight-point advantage, and it mounts up as 23 altogether. Cross outside with Billy Taylor. There's a shot by Mario Clark. Taylor rebounds, and he's still working hard. Got that one off the board. Well, you know that the uh, West Aurora Ball Club is a hard-working club and one with a lot of pride. They, they, they wouldn't have gotten here had they not had that, those uh, attributes. Billy Taylor has led this team in rebounding three straight years, and he's only a junior, which is amazing. You mentioned Brandon in scoring. He needed 108 points in these final three games of the season to tie Andy Kaufman, a man that we're more than familiar with coach and uh, that would tie him in second place but that means he needs to get 36 per game 
And I'm sure he's not really worried about that too much. No, he's wanting to win a state championship. Of course, uh, for some of you that might not know, Coach uh, Rustio at Jacksonville coached uh, Andy Taylor, the Illinois star. Andy Kaufman. I better watch Andy, out there. Excuse me, Andy Kaufman. I don't know. Huh? Too many names. Well, you're getting in trouble. I think I recruited somebody named Andy <laughs> Taylor. He's from Mayberry. Ahari Cross, the Simmons. Crowd buzzing. Some of the athletic action here. Great athleticism, Frank. And here's some coming up right now. Oh, he backed it up. Well, he turned the corner. He's 8 out of 10 from the field, 6 out of 7 from the foul line, 10 rebounds, 22 points. Showed some discipline there. And I think that's the difference between this year's King team and last year, besides the big band in the middle. They seem to really be more under control. Good point. Kicks it out. There's no heavy load on any one of these performers, that's for sure. How good is Griffith going to be three years from now? How far is it to the moon? Yeah. Well, the NBA scouts will be here instead of the college scouts. Nice move by Brandon on the side. Split the legs and laid it in. High post catch of Griffith looking for Jamie Brandon back door three times. Now they've executed that to perfection. 59-36 there. 407 to play in this game. This is Simmons for three. You'll notice King just doesn't shoot many threes. Don't have, don't have to. to. No, you don't have to. Short shots are still pretty high percentage. Brandon flashes to the goal and gets bumped. Brandon is so quick and such a great athlete, and uh, his teammates have such great confidence in him. They see the passing lane, boom. You know, sometimes life is not fair, and I'm sure that uh, Western Aurora feels that way now, too, because what a great season they had. And then on the very first draw when they come down here, they, they have to play the best team maybe that we've seen in a long, long time. Not that anybody cannot be beaten, but that's a tough road to hoe, that first, that first game against King. Tough draw, but there are many teams that didn't get this far. So that's right. You know, a couple of weeks from now, they'll look back on it and say what an experience it was. And they're only lost the 19-19 year. 17 wins in a row that West ran off here. 61-36. It's an accumulation thing playing against King. Finally, you fight off the strength, and you, you know, you fight off the ball handling, you fight off the scoring. And, uh, the big thing, Frank, you don't get any easy baskets. You just don't, they don't get enough easy baskets. In, in, a, in a normal game and floor things, everyone gets some easy points, but uh, you can count on one hand the number of easy points that West Aurora has gotten. Simmons and Clark trying to shake free outside. And yet at the other end, King has had numerous easy second baskets, or layup baskets, rebound buckets. Clark, rhythm jumper goes down. He's their go-to guy and has been all year. Well, he's averaging 21, Frank, and he's got a tough 11 in this game. Up ahead, Brandon. Look at him beat the pack. Easy. Nice movement by both, by both youngsters up the floor, and Griffin kicked the ball out nicely to get it started. Brandon now has built it up to 25, and he and Selby have 47. The senior show is on. Amari Cross with the ball. Simmons for three. Right there. Mike Simmons. He'll be back next year. Brandon, a little behind the back. He's more of the off guard, would you not say, fellows, as opposed to the mature star? Yeah. Yeah. Be, I, I would assume if he does end up going to the University of Illinois that that would be his position. They call it shooting guard, don't they? Yeah. Yes, it's a offensive foul on Brandon. I'm sure you're right about that. You and I call it shooting guards when we're in this situation. As a coach, you call it an off guard. So the, the, other, the others understand. West with the ball. And a timeout by West Aurora with 221 to go. We'll be back in these messages. Sawmill Creations, located at 110 West Broadway in Bradley at the Viaduct. For that distinctive gift, consider these cypress clocks, decorative plaques, rocker animals. Authentic pennant clocks to show pride in your team or school. Priced at $65 plus tax. To order, call 815-939-7044. Write or stop in. We'll be glad to serve you. Coach Mel Rustio at Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana for the quarterfinal session of the AA tournament. He 
St. Louis Lincoln, a winner earlier. King marching here by the tune of 22 points. Tonight, Rolling Meadows and Gordon Tech go first. Quincy and Chicago Heights bloom in two really good-looking matchups. We'll hope you join us. We start at 7. Scoring leaders in this game, Brandon with 25, Billy Taylor with 14 for the Blackhawks. Off the glass, Selby, as usual, Ojumawa for West. Selby's turned in a strong performance this afternoon, on the, especially on the offensive board, and uh, he's played very well uh, defensively. He's oh. been an intimidator for King inside. Free throw is home by Clark. Clark with a dozen in the game, 10 under his average. Gerard Billingsley, 22, a 6'3 freshman for Sharif. With a 21-point lead and 2.13 uh, to go, Coach Cox is beginning to go to his bench to get uh, some rest for his starters and get some experience for his younger kids. In a second, he'll have three freshmen in the game when Kaim Cunningham comes in. This is Brandon, exchanges to the left-hand Selby. Forces the boards and a traveling. traveling. And now 21, Kaim Cunningham, a 6'6 freshman, replaces Jamie Brandon. Brandon had 25. King has a 6'9 freshman or two, <laughs> along with Griffith. And 6'6", uh, six, six. Brandon watches another one, 30, Thomas Hamilton. Outstanding looking athletes to uh, come off that bench for Chicago King, which would indicate that uh, things are not going to uh, take a step backwards in the near future. Well, Richard Griff is a great player to build a program around. A three for Mike Simmons. Simmons hit two threes here in the fourth, 63-46, 150 to play. King with the ball and the lead. Schofield's gone all the way at the point. And a knockdown. Simmons, and got called for it. He had called more for using the forearm as he did uh, from his movement into the defender. Just uh, shielding him off with his forearm, got called for the offensive foul. And then Postal Weight 24 is in for West. Coach Kirkman's going to his bench also to give his uh, youngsters an opportunity to play on the assembly hall floor and to say that they played in the state championship series. Michael Irvin is 11 of 5'10 freshman, and so Landon Cox has the freshman class in. Thor Shavers, 52 for West. There's Mario Clark for two. It's a 15-point game with a minute and a half. Going to try to trap Irvin. Coming back to help with Anton Little, a 6'6". 200 pounder and West has the ball and Landon Cox jumps off the bench. A little concerned about that. If you got a quick three pointer here, I wouldn't be surprised to see Jamie Brandon come back in to settle things down. King tips it away. Landon Cox really bolted off the bench on that last move. He did. Shavers looks in. Let's see if Gray will send one up. It's going to be Clark for three again. Good again. Clark hit another in the 12-point game with 115. And King juggles the ball here with Kaim Cunningham. And Mike Irvin brings it ahead. Clock moves toward a minute. Irvin, 5'10", freshman. They tell us they really like his potential. Irvin goes all the way, penetrates, and is fouled. Confident for a freshman, came right in the ball game, uh, took charge in that situation, uh, pointed the defender off, uh, tried to bait him there, but then took the ball right up the lane right now and uh, created the, got the foul on him. Coach Cox told me in December he'll really like him. He's really quick, and here he comes. Uh, he played, uh, that, that's not a freshman move. That's the move of an older ball player and somebody with some certainly with confidence. Urban missed the free throw. King averages 73 points a game on the season. They have 63 here. Irvin missed two. Taylor rebounds, and it's out of bounds to West. So under a minute to go, you can count on the fact that West will try a three here. And 22 would be a good bet to take that three. Spotting up is Billy Taylor. Blocked and fouled 
by Hamilton. Good side, good size youngster right there. Can you imagine a two-three zone with uh, he and Griffith in the back and Porter? Porter. Six, oh, 11, three, 10, and nine. Here's Billy Taylor. This young man's played hard and played a fine, had a fine season here, Taylor. Gotta give you a tip. He's a 61% field goal shooter and 43 from three-point land, so he's a capable shooter and scorer, average 18 plus. A pair. It's a 10-point game. And West presses. And a steal by West. It's Taylor. Steps in, finger roll. He's fouled. Foul. And Schofield is going to jump off the bench to try to handle the ball. And Selby. Selby's coming back in. And Simmons and Adumawa come back for West. 43 seconds to play in a game whose complexion changed quickly. Each coach is making a different statement. Uh, well, maybe this isn't over. <laughs> with uh, less than a uh, minute and 50 to go that uh, they got that other three-pointer down that Coach Cox might come. He's coming with his entire starting lineup back on the floor right now with 43 seconds to go and 10 points ahead. Kings, the reserves, don't have a lot of experience. Many games, uh, the coaches have played five players or a few, six maybe, and so there's not a ton of experience on that bench. When you're all freshmen, it's difficult to have a lot of experience. Billy Taylor hits the free throw. It's a nine-point game. This is not the way you want the game to finish if you're Chicago Kings because it leaves negative pace in your mouth and it creates an attitude where negative things may be say, said post-game. It's eight. Brandon trapped and fouled. When it'll be one in bonus. Gordy Kirkman jumps up. And the wholesale substitution start taking place. Was it about a 21-point game, a 20-point game? Yeah. And uh, with a minute and 58 or whatever. Uh, but you don't, but if, you're, if you're Coach Cox, you really don't like to see this happen because uh, it, uh, it, it just spoils a great effort. He really had no choice. I mean, if I were yep. Coach Cox, I would have went back to him, too. Back in. Maybe the next time you don't take him out so quickly. Well, he took them out with about two minutes left, and they were up by, what, 15, 17? 17, so he, it, all, it all went according to form. It's just that those three-pointers by Simmons changed the course of things. And Taylor's a good-looking player, isn't he? He is back. Yes, Brandon so. missed the second. He's got 26. And West shoots with 34 seconds now. Gray. Simmons going to let fly here. Began his clock. A three. Yes! Six-point game with 25 seconds. Time out. out west. And oh, how things have changed. We'll come back and now close Assembly Hall in a moment. Now this from one of your network sponsors, Country Company. The crowd is back in the game. It's six points. And the crowd is uh, pulling for the underdog, West Aurora. And West Aurora has hit these three-pointers, as you're going to see right here. It has pulled him now uh, right in the ball game. Clark hitting a three-pointer. I tell you what, uh, you know, you, you score, when you take taking your kids out of a ball game, you sit them down, Frank, a little bit, they cool off, they think they've won a ball game, then they're called on to go back in a ball game. You're, they're not going to respond that quickly. King hasn't made a three-pointer in four tries. West has had six for 14. King has the ball, but if West can steal it and shoot a three, they've got a, a glimmer. Well, another thing, West Aurora needs to foul unintentionally, immediately, to force King to go to the free throw line and, and uh, win the ball game there. No timeouts for West Aurora left. And that's important. Well, you use so many of them just trying to stay in the game, keep the dike from breaking. Schofield will throw it in off the, the break to Brandon. Stolen, foul, Gray. Perfect. No time off the clock. Yeah. yeah. It's a good foul. And then you have to. You can't even be selective as to whom you're going to foul in this situation. I'm sure they would have rather fouled someone else than, than Jamie Brandon. But time is of the essence. And time says 24.3 as Landon Cox takes a glance at the scoreboard. Jamie Brandon, who is four for seven. 
to his 80% free throw mark. He drilled it. And that's a big point right there in this situation. You know, you take a couple, three possessions now. Provided there's not any fouling. Brandon builds it to 27, and it's 66-58. They'll come. West will come down and try to get off another three. It'll be Clark again. Three again, short this time. Sharif has it. And now, King looks finally as if they've got the game by the throat. And again, uh, it, I'm sure it's, it kind of spoils a nice effort that they had in control, total control of the ball game. But as you pointed out, Frank, uh, when they're as young as they are on that bench, you send those puppies in and uh, things can kind of, uh, you know, get away from it. And there might be somebody at home saying, well, now maybe if West Aurora would have opened the game up and started running, maybe this would have been a different ball game. Uh -uh. They would have opened it up and started running. King would have been, King starters would have been on the bench with five minutes left to go in the game. Exactly right. One other thing, too, when you go out of a game like Simmons is there, you mentally have a tough time getting back in when you don't think you're coming back in. Physically, you're fine. Mentally, it's a tough deal. Hard to do. Griffith just reached up, flat-footed, grabbed the ball, sent it outside, and King will run off 10 seconds if they can. Jamie Brandon is fouled with five seconds to play, and King advances to guess what? The semifinal against guess who? Lincoln. Well, last year, if you remember back to that semifinal game, King missed seven one and one and blew a lot of chances. And you know King is really looking forward to that. Even though they uh, defeated them uh, by some 30 points in mid-December, uh, King certainly wants a shot at the three-time defending state champion right down here. Nice uh, sportsmanship you see Schofield over there congratulating Tahari Cross and Mario Clark. West gets uh, 50, Jason King in the game. 10 is Rodney Brooks. 34, checked in is Derek Woods. 40 is Dante Bruno. 32 and 12 Tim Matt. So we're getting the players in, and that's the ball game with King holding on and beating Aurora West. It's 66 to 58. And that moves King to 30 and 0 on the season. West Aurora finishes the season with a mark of 24 and 6. Jamie Brandon led King today at scoring, but Johnny Selby with a big assist. And on we go. Well, that was a big story in the first half, especially Frank. Selby and, and, uh, and Jamie Brandon did an outstanding job offensively, and Selby especially on the board. Jamie, they can use him in so many places. Brandon can run the baseline. He can face the basket outside. He can cut the middle post up. He's just an outstanding all-around offensive ball player. Well, Lincoln moves forward in quest of their fourth consecutive title and trophy. Trophy they'll get. King trying to go unbeaten is 30 and zip and that will be the clash in our first final four game tomorrow tonight we start at seven for jim albright and coach mel ruscio frank bassoni thanks for watching see you at seven so long everybody Watching another championship event. This 1990 chapter of March Madness has been brought to you by the country companies. When it matters most, the country's behind you. The Illinois pork producers. The 10,000 pork producers of Illinois encourage you to try the new lean, nutritious pork, the other white meat. And True Value Hardware. For quality, selection, and personal attention, make True Value Hardware your store of first choice.